Amen. Welcome back, everyone. As you get ready to go into our message today on procrastination. Procrastination. Let me see how bad. There's Sister Sophia and there's Dana, Susan. Amen, family. Welcome back. Welcome. There's Jana, Ella. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now, were you, were you guys still able to talk when the video was buffering? Were you guys still able to continue? Because I, I, I try to put it on standby on my end so it doesn't disconnect and uh, you guys are able to make, yep, we're back. Lisa Fleet, Baltimore, yep. You you were able to c continue talking. Amen. Good. That's what I was hoping uh, and that way you can c still c communicate during that time. Amen. Now, my three, <laughs> Deanna, uh, uh, Deanna, this message is for all of us. Procrastination, procrastination is one of the devil's main tools. Great, I'm glad there was still conversation. Amen, amen. Uh, uh, and that's what you do, Lisa. You, you read you read the scriptures that come up. Yeah, procrastination is one of the devil's main tools to keep us from moving in what we are supposed to do for his kingdom. See, God gives a, a, a little assignment to each one of us in our lives and sometimes he's just testing us to see if we're going to be obedient uh, just like I, I, I don't know if you guys heard that song i uh on my on my other show that i've been i've been streaming not streaming but i've been showing you archives uh gospel vibes my musical show and the theme song is six six because the bible well about 15 years before that song was written i was in church and the pastor said turn to turn to the book of micah and as you know micah is only a few pages long it took me almost the entire sermon to find the book of Micah because I didn't know the books of the Bible well enough. And so I'm trying to act like I'm just uh, really pensively listening, having no idea where Micah was. And so at the end of that service, I said, you know what? Somebody needs to write a song for adults, not just kids. Somebody needs to write a song about how to learn the books of the Bible so you can turn to them quicker, especially those books that are real small. And I said that. And I went home and I'm trying to figure out how to write a song. I'm trying to write a song, but I'm trying to make it poetry and nothing came, nothing came. Years later, I mean, I'm talking about, let's see, that was that was probably about five or six years later, I thought 15. I, kept, I forgot how many years ago later. I was in church and I looked at this bulletin. They had the books of the Bible on the back of the bulletin. And then in the spirit, I saw a line after every four books. I said, wait a minute. I don't have to add words to the Bible. All I have to do is say it. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Seek of Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Sephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. See, that's, and then I got the beat going. And then Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, books of John, then Jude, and Revelations. I'm telling you now, learn the word, share with others who haven't heard. Six, six books going to save you and me, but you got to learn the B-I-B-L-E. <laughs> he gave me the song. Now, what is so funny is I wrote the music five years before he gave me the revelation that the words of the Bible go to that song. See, that's how God uses in the spirit. That's why we have to be obedient in the spirit. Because sometimes God is working on us on different projects that he's going to put together later in our lives. And we don't even know why we're doing it. I just wrote the music. I thought it was a fun song. Had no lyrics whatsoever. And then years later, he tells me how to say the books of the Bible. He tells me how to say the books of the Bible in rhythm. And all of a sudden they go perfectly to a song I wrote almost five years earlier with no intent of making that a books of the Bible song. But the Holy Spirit already knew what he was working on. And that's when you hear me always say, that's why you always hear me say, be obedient to the Holy Spirit because sometimes the Holy Spirit is working on us for something we don't even know about yet. But we're being obedient. That's why we're being obedient because we're just doing what God says. And later on, he puts things together and wait, wow, this is perfect. I don't even write anything because the song is already written. And so, and then later on I did two other versions. I did like a, a hip hop version because the adults 
freaked out because I was saying it so fast. So then I, I did a hip hop version, which is slower. And then I did what I call a too legit to quit version, which is really fast. But the whole purpose, it doesn't matter, is if you can't find the books of the Bible, learn any version. Because you, I say turn the book of Micah, just at the divine of judgment, first exam. Just like, remember the, the A, B, C, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. So we used to sing as a, as a kid the A, B, C song to learn the alphabet. So the, the, the Holy Spirit gave me this song, how to, how to write a book to the Bible song for adults who don't want to feel like a baby listening to the baby version of books of the Bible. Write a, write a nice jamming version for adults to, to have sing along with. And so that is online. I mean, I'm this, the, the show I'm, I'm streaming right now called Gospel Vibes, that's the theme song. The Holy Spirit told me, once you come up with this show, make the books of the Bible the theme song so everybody who watches that show will learn the books of the Bible just because they're watching your show. Because remember, everything, everything is repetition to get it burned into your mind. And once it's in your mind, you got it. But procrastination, now look, I almost gave up. Procrastination almost made me not write that song because once I could not make it a poem, I thought, oh, the Lord's going to take this assignment away from me. He told me to write a books of the Bible song, but I can't think of anything. I can't think of anything. Four years go by, five years go by. I'm feeling convicted now because the Lord told me to write a books of the Bible song, but I haven't written it. I don't know how to write it. I went into panic. I went into panic. Notice, when you go into panic, you can't hear the Holy Spirit. That's why you hear me say it over and over again. Don't go into panic. Because panic mode quiets the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is still talking, but panic makes noise in your spirit. Panic, frustration, anxiety, fear, all that makes noise. And your Holy Spirit is speaking to you. But if you're in panic mode, you can't hear a thing. Worry comes from fear. Anxiety comes from fear. Depression comes from fear. The fear, the spirit of fear is a big family. And if you block any of them, you block them all. That's why we got to remember, God did not create a spirit of fear, but of love, power, a sound mind. Sound mind what? Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. So when we're in a state of peace of mind, the Holy Spirit can give us ideas. The Holy Spirit gives us answers, direction, assignments, all that comes just like just now. I was sitting there enjoying hallelujah with you. I was just enjoying the presence of the Lord. And then the Holy Spirit said, Look at your gas tank. I looked down the gas tank. Now, if I had not been obedient to the Holy Spirit, I would have run out of gas, not being able, not only to finish the, the, the sermon, but not even able to make home. I would have had to call AAA if I had dis, not if I had been procrastinating on listening to the Holy Spirit. Well, you know what? You know, Holy Spirit, you know, I'll just wait till the end of stillness. And then I'll, 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 I'll get some gas at the end of the sermon. If I had gotten gas in a sermon, I would have been pushing the car to the gas station because not, not only was the gas light on, but the gas needle was almost on zero and the light was on, which means I only had minutes before the car was going to go out of gas. So see, that came in stillness. I was just sitting there enjoying myself, enjoying the presence of the Lord, waiting for the end of the song, and the Holy Spirit, in the middle of stillness, looked down at your gas tank. You need to get some gas because a lot of people need to hear this message. And if you give out a gas and the car doesn't work, that's going to interrupt the message. So take a break. Tell them to keep talking. Go get gas. Come back and now get the message that people need to hear because procrastination affects all of us. If anybody's dealing with procrastination right now, don't feel convicted. You're not the only one. If you've ever been told to do something and you say, well, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next week. And all of a sudden, months have gone by. Years have gone by, and you go like, wow, Lord told me to do that a long time ago. And sometimes the Lord gives it to you, and you do nothing, and next thing you know, he gives it to somebody else. It needs a, a, an assignment. Now, for me, that assignment was meant for me. I got convicted thinking the, the, the Lord was going to give the assignment to someone else. So now I was feeling sad and depressed that I failed God, that I thought that, okay, God, you told me to write a book, the Bible song, Years have gone by. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. I failed you. See, that's the devil. The devil. I, you failed God. He told you to write a song, but you didn't do it. You failed God. God didn't give up on me. God still said, hey, God still said, I got the assignment. Chill out. Relax. Don't panic. See, we get convicted. And if we don't pay attention, the devil comes in 
while we're feeling convicted and the devil says see god can't use you god cannot use you because you, you gave up on god now he's given them you because you did not you did not be obedient to the word of god amen so we got to make sure we always listen listen when the holy spirit says do something do it amen amen so all my cross talk uh cross talk chairs are in uncharged now making sure we stay focused on the word as what i'm sharing now procrastination of course the definition of what putting things off putting things off and sometimes it's detrimental to us that sometimes the things we put off yeah we have a godly assignment if we put things off in the spirit that means we're missing our divine assignment god's ready god's ready to bless us at the end of that assignment when we're obedient and when we obedient to god a blessing always follows because of your obedience so sometimes procrastination blocks our blessings other times it can be detrimental for us physically if you if you have a doctor's appointment well i'll do it next week i'll do it next week and next thing you know months have gone by you go to the doctor and he says man i wish you come in months ago i could have i could have caught this now you gotta go through treatment what happened you kept saying i'll go to the doctor i'll go to the doctor i'll go to the doctor and what happened you put off till tomorrow so long that what started as just a bad cough has now turned into a major thing you got to get treatment or medication for because you kept putting it off till tomorrow and see that's a major challenge we have to capture that stronghold every day because whenever we look at our schedule every day we say you know what i just i i, I can't do this today and there's nothing wrong with a busy schedule you put it off tomorrow because you got to get busy schedule because you don't want to overwork yourself but i'm talking about something if you keep putting it off to tomorrow keep putting it off to tomorrow and next thing you know a month has gone by months have gone by years have gone by so that's that's why that's why we have to make sure we make sure when you when it comes to your mind and sister Jana knows she always has to remind me of this because i i my schedule is so busy that time can go by faster than i think and when i tell Jana, i say we know I'll, I'll do that in a few minutes and i'm doing so many things at the same time next thing i know she said i thought you said a few minutes that was five hours ago five hours ago because a lot of times we get so busy with things in this life when things are important and you say you know what i gotta do this today don't wait till later as soon as your marine said you know i gotta do that right now do it right now don't say well i don't have time right now because once you say i don't have time right now that's when you go amen that's a, that, yeah, exactly right julie Pesci. that's why i did a whole lesson lesson 60 the power of the subconscious mind your subconscious mind does whatever you teach it to do if you teach it to wait till tomorrow it's going to wait till tomorrow in every part of your life if you teach the holy spirit i'm going to do this right now then you're teaching that right now so we got to learn morning laura you got to learn to make sure part of everything you do how you react to everything your subconscious mind is recording how you're going to do things for the rest of your life like i tell the kids in school if you don't learn to exercise as a young person as an older person you'll have trouble exercising because you didn't like exercising as a young person so your subconscious mind says we don't like exercise and now you've recorded that and your subconscious mind takes that as a reality so that's why just like when you when we were counting the days for sister candy when you're trying to create a new habit whether it's getting off uh, cigarettes alcohol a habit whenever you're trying to create a new habit the reason it takes 21 to 30 days is you're teaching your subconscious mind no 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 i no longer am lazy i get up and work out now your your your, your, your conscious mind wants to do whatever your subconscious mind tells it if you want to sleep late every day your subconscious mind says well we're going to sleep late every day we don't have to wake up but if you reprogram you start getting yourself up every day getting things done every day after 21 days of that that's scientifically what they've said if you do anything for 21 days straight and then by day 30 your body your physical body accepts that as a new habit but you're also telling your subconscious mind the old me the old procrastinating me the procrastinating me is gone i now get things done when i say i'm going to do it i do it the same day i say it don't wait till tomorrow tomorrow is not promised to anyone tomorrow may never come so if you say i'll wait till tomorrow and tomorrow doesn't get here for you your time comes this night 
That means something you could have done to be a blessing to somebody tomorrow. And you said, I'll wait till tomorrow. And the Lord takes you right now. Tomorrow doesn't come for you. And now the person who was meant to be blessed by you cannot be blessed by you because you could, you did not do it. Amen. So the three poems a day, get the, the sun angle here. The three poems a day is one of them is all refusing. Now you're going to let these three titles. Let me get a different angle here. I can't see the screen. Okay. Bring the sun visor down. So I get some shade. The blocks. Sun keep, the sun keeps finding me. Refusing. Refusing to wait on the Lord. These are three poems. Refusing to wait on the Lord. Now I'll tell you in a minute how that's procrastination. Number two. Get up and get busy. Get up and get busy. Because remember sometimes when you're feeling so good in the bed and you don't want to get up. Oh, I'll, I'll get up. I'll, I'll get up later. I'll do that later. I want to sleep a few more hours right now and you don't get up later <laughs> you get up later but it never gets done and number three stop fighting me now now stop fighting me stop fighting me is when the devil is trying to keep you from getting to an, a divine assignment and uh, I got a glare I got a glare that's really bothering me I was in the shade <laughs> oh good thing let me turn right here so so number two before Deanne's fighting these Get up and get busy. And number two, uh, number three, Deanne, number three is uh, stop fighting me. Stop fighting me now. Stop fighting me now is number three. Now, let me first, let me explain the first before I do the poem. How can refusing to wait on the Lord, how can refusing to wait on the Lord, how can there be procrastination? Well, let me, let me tell you this way. If the Lord, if the Lord is telling you to do something, a divine assignment, and you know the Lord told you to do something, but you do other things instead. Now the Lord just told you to do whatever it is. Like I'll, I'll use myself an example. Once he gave me six, six books of the Bible to write a book for adults to learn the books of the Bible faster. Write it, write a song about it, it's a fun song and they can play it over and over again and they'll sing it with me, they'll know it. Now that was the assignment, but because I couldn't make it a poem, see I thought I was supposed to write a poem that was my misunderstanding and not letting the Holy Spirit talk to me at the time he gave it to me. So once I thought I couldn't do it, I start, I start getting more involved in church knowing the assignment was write a song about the books of the Bible. But I'm doing everything else but the assignment. See, that's a form of procrastination because I know the assignment is waiting for me. Even when, when the Lord told me to write, uh, uh, when I was delivered from pornography addiction, and I wrote a book called Men Less Talk. It took me four years to write that book because the devil kept saying, you can't write that book because once you write a book that you were delivered from pornography addiction, people gonna say, ooh, he was addicted to pornography. That's the devil talking. Because God said, yeah, yeah, that's the devil talking because a lot of people don't know how to be delivered from pornography through the word of God. By knowing they have somebody to talk to when they're struggling with pornography or sexual addiction and you've been victorious over it, th they need that book. And so I'm going through that for four years, trying to avoid writing the book because I'm listening to the world. Yeah, but you know, you can't tell people, look at how they're gonna look at you. You can't tell people. The devil, that's a lie in the pit of hell. A lot of people need the word to know how. And a lot of you, a lot of you have been delivered from some stronghold. Don't let the devil make you feel ashamed. See what the world makes you feel ashamed of, God can use the same victory to be a blessing to others who don't know how to do it. If you if you are victorious over any part of your life, there's somebody who needs to hear your testimony, who you can be a major blessing to because they're in the exact place where you were and have no idea how to hold on to the Lord to make it through it. That means your victory can be a blessing to someone else and you, you're not even thinking. You're telling them this is what the Lord did for me. This is how I held on to the word of God. God pulled me through. And once you start talking about your testimony, the Holy Spirit comes in. And the Holy Spirit takes your words and makes it become a blessing to the person listening. And that's the power of your testimony. Don't ever be ashamed of your testimony. Because the world makes you feel like you're being judged because of your testimony. No, God can use your testimony to pull you through. And not only pull you through, use you for the kingdom. I once heard many years ago a sermon that said, whatever you've been struggling with your entire life, when, 
when God delivers you from it, that's your main ministry to reach back and bless others. Now think about it. All of us are going through all kinds of challenges right now. But just think about, there's one challenge you may be dealing with all your life. It seems like, it seems like all your life, you've been dealing with this one particular challenge. You go through other challenges, but there's one challenge that's been with you your entire life. You go like, man, man, why can't I get over this? That's because that's going to be a blessing to others when you do get the victory. Don't say if, when you get the victory. God's going to use you mightily in that area because that is your personal ministry. Now, God's going to use you all other ways. When God is flowing through you, he's using us all over the place. But your divine purpose usually is tied in to whatever he delivers you from to be able to go back and bless others with how he saved you. Like we sing in a song, he saved us from so much hurt and pain. How did he save you? Somebody needs to know that. And when you share how he saved you, that's going to be a light in someone else's life who has no idea how to be saved until they hear your testimony. So don't ever be ashamed of your testimony. That's why there's power in your testimony. It, is, it wouldn't be a testimony if there what? If there was no test, there would never be a testimony for you to be victorious over. So a testimony is your victory over a test. Now we have all kinds of testimonies, but that one thing, Whew. That one thing that's been bothering you all your life, that's the thing that God's going to use you mightily to bless others. That's how he's going to use you mightily because he has you go through the battle and gives you victory in the battle to go back and tell others, this is how you can win. This is how you can beat this thing because I've been there and I beat and I beat him down and I'm saying in your face and now I'm walking in victory and I'm telling everybody else I know this is how to walk in victory over the tricks of the devil trying to keep us convicted and negative and feel defeated. That's all. Those are all lies for the pit of hell. Amen. Amen. Uh, Lisa, <laughs> mess to messenger. Yeah, he'll turn, a, he'll turn that mess into a message. And a test into a testimony. Amen, Lisa. I like that. He'll turn that mess into a message, and that message will be a test that of your testimony or the test that you overcame. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's go to the first one. A refusing to wait on God. Now, this is the first one. The first poem, refusing to wait on God. Now put your put your finger the the uh the scripture that goes with this first poem. Turn to, turn to Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, 15. Ephesians 5, 15. This, this goes with the first poem, but this is also kind of our, our, our text for the day. We're going through, we're going to read verses 15 to 17. Ephesians 5, verses 15 to 17. Okay, it reads... Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what is the will of the Lord. Understand what is the will of the Lord. See, what does it say? Making the most of your time. How many times have you got to the end of the day and you go, man, I didn't do anything today. Now, if it's a rest day, see, I had to do this too. Sometimes I get so busy that I have to physically write the word rest day on my calendar. That means rest is for a purpose. But sometimes if I didn't do that, I would fill every empty space on my calendar. Oh, I got time and end up having no rest time. You got to rest. So you have, if you have to write the word rest down on your schedule to remind you, you need to also rest, put rest on your schedule because we need peace of mind every day. Don't get so caught up. Don't be so busy. You never rest. And then whether it making the most of your time, if you overwork yourself, you also are not productive. See, there's two ways. If you get so busy, you're too tired. You're too tired to fulfill God's, God's assignment because you're so busy, you never have the energy. That's also a form of procrastination because you know what the assignment is. Whatever it is, 
you know what it is you got to get done, but sometimes we get to doing everything else. What needs to get done never gets done. And that's why we have to be, yeah, yeah, I have a, I have an appointment with rest today. Like we go to a doctor's appointment, well, today I got an appointment with rest, rest between two and four, I'll be resting. So don't call me, don't talk to me. I'll be resting from two to four. So like I'll be in a meeting from two to four. I'll be in the doctor's office. I'll be resting from two to four. If you need to write that down, if that's the only way you get rest, make an appointment, make an appointment because the key to overworking yourself, overworking yourself leads to less productivity because if you're too tired to focus you're too tired to be productive what good are you either end if you are too busy to do it or you're too lazy to do it it's still not getting done amen so this one called refusing to wait on the lord refusing to wait on the lord brings stress and stress brings pain and strife all you had to do was wait on the Lord who really wants to bless your life. But no, you just had to do it yourself. Couldn't wait for the Lord to come through. So now you're sitting in the mess you made asking God what you should do. You should have trusted him in all your ways so he could direct your path. But indeed your pride came before your fall. Now you're fearing that you will fail, you will feel God's wrath. Truth is, God never left your side. It is you who went astray. Instead of waiting on God's divine plan, you just had to go and do it your way. Yet God still has his hand on you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Through all your impatience and selfish ways, God's love is always near. Refusing to wait on the Lord. See, that's what's so good. <clears throat> that's why we thank the Lord every day. Because <clears throat> so many times, so many times, we get in our own way. And, and sometimes you hear me say it, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, for standing in my own way. You're trying to bless me. I'm trying to do your job. You're trying to bless me. You're trying to get things done in my life. I'm trying to do your job by being so busy. I'm trying to do everything I think can be done. And all you need to do is one thing to solve my problem. I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off. Can't even really see exactly what to do because what I really need to do is sit still and trust you. And that's what this whole thing is about. When we refuse to trust the Lord, that means, Lord, I don't need you right now, Lord. I got the answer. Oh, no, Lord, I don't need a blessing. I got the answer. That's what you're saying. When you don't wait on the Lord, you're telling God your way is better. And usually 99.99999% you say, what was I doing? Oh Lord, what, 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 in all my ways, I don't acknowledge you because you won't direct my path. That's what you're doing. When you take your way out of God's way and do it your way, you just said, Lord, in all my ways, I don't acknowledge you and you won't direct my path because I'm going to do everything. I, 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 the wrong Trinity, me, myself, and I, you start going into pride mode, thinking you're the cat's meow and you can do everything. No, we can't do everything. We need God in every part of our life. Another great sermon years ago I heard was if you can see the way to accomplish something, that's too small for God. God is in the miracle working business. When God gives you a goal and you go, God, how am I going to do that? You right now in God's alley. When you say, God, I don't know how I'm going to make it. He knows how you're going to make it. He's just waiting for you to ask him. But you're too busy running around. You're too busy standing in God's way. He's trying to bless you. You Wait, whoa. You're running around like this. Keep still. I'm trying to bless you. Child, will you keep still? It's you. Stand still. Now, blessing. Stand still so you can see the salvation. God's got the blessing, but you're so busy running around and not standing still. He's got the blessing ready to drop it on you, but you're running in circles trying to do God's job when you all need to do is sit still. Sit still and see the salvation of the Lord. And say that's when we hear, and that's when he gives us revelations and answers and direction and protection. Stand still. You hear me say this every day because if there's nothing else other than peace of mind we need to focus on, we need to focus on have no fear, stand still. I say it all the time. Exodus 14, 13. Have no fear, 
stand still. That's the way to kind of keep doing these things. Now, uh, also look at First John. First John, the other scripture is First John, chapter two. First John, chapter two. First John, chapter two. Verses 15 to 17 again. 15. Now, one of the things that also causes procrastination. Let's read 15 to 17. Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the pride of eye, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father but is from the world. The world is passing away and also its lusts. But the one who does the will of God lives forever. That's the importance. That is the importance of a godly assignment. The one who does the will of God lives forever. If we get caught up so much in the world, if we get caught up so much in worldly distractions, God gives you an assignment and you're doing everything in the world but what God told you to do. What did it just say? It just said, the world is passing away. If you never get done what God has told you to do, whatever blessing you're supposed to be received, you'll receive a blessing for doing the assignment and the assignment will bless others. That's how God works. He blesses us first. He gives us an assignment. By obedience, we do the assignment. He blesses us for validation to let us know that's right, you're, you're in line with my will. And now you apply whatever he gave you and now it blesses others. That's how it comes. That's how God gives it to us. But we don't get it if we don't stand still. And if we're looking at the world, the distractions of the world, that's one of the main reasons for procrastination. Because we're so busy looking at everything else in the world that we're not paying attention to what is it we need to get done for the Lord and for ourselves. You might have some stuff around the house you need to get done, but you never do it because you, you're distracted. You're distracted on everything else in the world but what you need to get done either for yourself or for your divine purpose. Amen. Uh, 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 Red Rose, your, your alcoholic friend says he's not drinking anymore. Praise God. Amen. And, and, and supporting Red Rose. Just like we've been supporting uh, Sister Candy. She's now on day 72. She came on the fellowship. She was on the fellowship battling. We kept praying for her. But it wasn't until she got to the point of saying, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. I'm going to do this. And see, when you get to the point of, I'm tired of going through this stuff. I'm tired of, of struggling because I'm being disobedient. I'm struggling. I'm refusing to do what God says. See, when you, when you get to a point of being so tired, of whatever situation you're going through. Okay, Lord, Lord, what, what do I have to do, Lord? Show me what I need to do. What am I not doing that's keeping me in this situation? Whatever it is. And many times, I did a Bible study about that uh, the, the, at home with the word. My Bible study online, number seven, hard times. Sometimes hard times is a test. Sometimes is our disobedience. Sometimes it's us refusing rebellion. And sometimes, it's just uh, a, an attack from the devil, like Job. We don't know which one it is. Hard times can be for different reasons. But when we stand still and say, Lord, Lord, what is it I'm doing? If, if I'm doing something, Lord, if I'm doing something, Lord, what am I doing? What am I doing right now that is keeping me from getting to point B? What Am I doing something? Lord, show me, Lord. Show me if I'm doing something right now, Lord. If I'm doing something that's blocking my own blessings, show it to me now, Lord. Show it to me right now. I receive it. I receive it. I will do it because I'm trying to get out of this situation. Whatever it is that I need to do, Lord, show me what it is. If it's a test, I'll, I'll keep trusting you. I'll keep holding on. If it's a devil attacking, I'll rebuke him in the name of Jesus and start walking boldly by the word. If, if, if it's rebellion, the spirit of rebellion, we talked about that in uh, yesterday. The spirit of rebellion, the Bible even says, can be as witchcraft because the spirit of rebellion means you absolutely are telling God, no, I'm not going to do it that way. Anything that is against God is a spirit of rebellion because you are choosing. God tells you to do something and your answer is, oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to, I know God's calling, God's calling you. He ain't calling me. I'm not going to do that. That's a spirit of rebellion. You're outright refusing to do what God told you to do. 
So when you understand that, that's when you understand that a demonic spirit of rebellion is trying to keep you from going to the next level. Amen? Now, get up and get busy. Number two, second poem, get up and get busy. Now, I got motivated to write this poem because, as you know, on YouTube, there's a lot of motivational videos which is just about people, get up, stop being lazy, do this, don't stand, away, don't stand in your own way. Most motivational videos are trying to make us understand what you do in your mind is what your body is going to do. And I, I just like I did the Bible study, control your mind and you can control all sin. But it goes with life. Control your mind and you can accomplish whatever you put your mind to. But if you don't control your mind, your mind is all over the place. It's everywhere. If you cannot control your mind, your mind goes completely crazy and now you're scattered. Nothing is getting done, including your assignment. So control your mind and you can control everything in your life because you got to control your mind to give it to the Lord every day. Commitment. When we say, Lord, I give it all to you, that's a, that's a commitment. Lord, I, I, I turn, I don't fear anymore. I come to presence. See, free, amen. free your mind and what? The body will follow. That's the clean version. Free your mind and your body will follow. So if you can give your mind to the Lord, your body's going to be ready to go. Let's go praise. My body's ready to praise because my mind and spirit is ready to praise. It starts, like I said, the battlefield in the mind. If your mind doesn't want to get up, your body's not going to get up. If your mind wants to accomplish something through the word of God, your body's going to follow. You are in control of what you're doing every single day. Amen. Praise God. Now, get up and get busy. <laughs> get up and get busy. Get up and get busy. You got things to get done. No time to waste around. The goals and dreams you have in sight come to you in the very next round. No time to get lazy or even distracted. Every day you get up to get the work done. The work is everything that you need to do to finally say, we've won. You've won over all those who said you couldn't do it, who never believed in you. You've won every time, all the times you failed, but with faith, you still push through. Can't nobody tell you your dream's too big? That's because their dreams are too small. If God showed it to you, it's meant to be yours, but you've got to do the work, that's all. Don't waste time sitting around about thinking, get up, get busy, get on the move. You've got work to do and get back to it now. You've got so much you've got to prove. Prove to the naysayers who spent their time telling you what you couldn't do. By reaching your goal, you've proved one thing, God has his hand on you. So get up, get busy. Don't procrastinate. You could be blocking your own way. Don't be the one who is holding you back from reaching your dreams today. Get up, get busy. See, we keep blaming everything else in this world as to why we cannot get somewhere when sometimes we are the only thing standing in our own way. The way we're thinking, disobedience, acting the wrong way, procrastination, having no faith, listening to the devil. See, that's all us. That's nobody else. We like to blame other people. Well, they're, they're, I can't get this done because of that. I can't get this done because of that. What about I can't get this done because of me? Have you ever said that? I can't, I can't, I can't get where I'm going because of me. Sometimes the, the person in the mirror is the only one standing in your own way. All the other doors are opening. All the other doors are open. But if you don't trust the Lord, that's something you got to do. You got to trust the Lord. God's not going to make you do it. You got to believe in yourself. You got to believe in the, in, the, in the dream he's given you. If you don't believe your dream, how can anybody else believe in your dream if you don't believe it can come to pass? That's what motivates you to keep working on it because you're so excited. God showed it to you. God's not going to show you something and not take you there. But the only thing you got to remember, when he takes you there, there are going to be some hard seasons along the way. He shows you a goal that you're going to be. You're going to reach that goal. But you're going to have to go through some challenges to get to the goal. That's the part he doesn't tell you. He doesn't tell you, oh, I didn't, real, I didn't realize I had a few valleys. You see, he'll show you the mountaintop. 
You look at the mountain. Oh man, there's my victory. There's my breakthrough. Oh, there's my healing. I, I see the mountain. There's me standing on the mountain. I've made it. I've made it. But you don't see there are two valleys before that mountain. You gotta go through two valleys to get to the mountain that you're looking at. You're looking at the mountain. You're looking at where God's taking you. But you gotta go through some valleys to get to that mountain, which means what? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it doesn't matter. God is with me through these valleys because he's already showed me where I'm going. That's why he plants things into you. He plants things to get you there because he showed you what he wants to do in your life. He showed you your purpose. Some people already know your purpose. You just haven't made it there yet. Some people are still seeking the purpose. But once you're seeking your purpose and you ask God, show me, Lord, what you want me to do, Lord, show me what you will show me, Lord. I feel you're moving in me, Lord. What you want me to do? Sometimes you don't know what it is. You can feel God moving inside, but you don't know what it is. Lord, I, I feel this urging. I feel this unction to, to just, just give it all to you, Lord. But I don't see what you want me to do. Show me what you want me to do. And sometimes your life of where he's taking you through is putting you through what he wants to do with you as you go through it. You, sometimes you don't even realize he's already using you just by you being strong and holding on to God's hand. He's already using you because others have no idea how to hold on to God's hand, but they're looking at you. Hey, dude, how you have faith? How do you stay so strong? He's using you. When you answer that question, how do you stay so strong? I hold on to the word of God. You just bless somebody. They had no idea how to be blessed by the word of God. You just said, I, I stay strong because God has been God has moved my life. You just taught them faith. You taught them how to believe. You teach them just by talking how you walk in victory. And sometimes he's using you already right there and you had no idea you already being a blessing and you thought God hadn't used you yet. And he's already using you. So sometimes when you stop and look back, look at all the people you blessed and had no idea God was already using you. See, God works with us all different types of ways. That's why we have to stand still to hear it. Now, the scripture for that, Proverbs 6, 4. Proverbs 6, 4. Now, the, the, the thing we always have to always remember is when we get when we get to uh, understand the idea. Proverbs 6, verse 4. 6, 4. Give no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. Get no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. Now, of course, we just talked about rest. We need rest. We need rest for our body. Our flesh needs rest to do what God wants us to do. But this verse here is really talking about when we've got things to do in this life and you're trying to change your life, God is giving you a goal and you want to change your life, you've got to give no sleep to your eyes or slumber to your eyelids except for what you need by your flesh to rejuvenate. You gotta have rest. In this flesh, we gotta rest. But other than that, we're not wasting time with, we're not wasting time, oh, I don't, I got time to socialize. We gotta socialize. But sometimes we get caught so much in the things of this world, we know good and well, we could have been spending some of that time on our goal. Like I have like friends like to go play cards. They like go bowling. Nothing wrong with bowling, playing cards. But a lot of my friends, when I was in college, they played cards every single night. Now I was trying to get something. That's when the Lord first placed in my heart to do things in entertainment. He, a lot of the things I'm doing today were planted in my spirit in college because in college, all the facilities were free. The studio was free. The radio studio was free because you're in college. The Lord said, Liv, I got all this stuff in my, my abilities that's free of charge. I went crazy in college using everything that costs money in life is free in college. All my other friends were playing cards every night. They're just chasing girls every night. I said, look, I'm trying to get somewhere. And all this stuff is free right now. That's going to cost money once we leave college. And that's what I was doing. Give no sleep to your, to your eyes. No slumber. When you're trying to get somewhere, you got things to do. You got to prioritize what it is you need to get done and do it because you got somewhere to go. You try to get somewhere. And that's what this poem is. Get busy and do it. 
Get it done because nobody else is going to do it. God gave you the goal. God gave you the dream. God gave you the assignment. So you got to do what it takes to get to where he's telling you to go because he's giving it to you for a reason. Amen. And that, of course, and of course, Matthew 7, 7, we know this right down. Matthew 7, 7, what? Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened. Ask, seek fine matthew 7 7 if you're working on a goal you got to constantly be asking okay what do i need to do next seek i need to seek an opportunity i need to seek a i got to seek a contacts find find is once you're looking for something you find it but if you're not looking for it how are you going to find it if you're not looking for it but if you're looking for the opportunity and you're looking for ways to change your reality to make things better for yourself and you're asking and you and you're asking and you're knocking on doors knocking it will be open then you find what you're looking for because you've been asking and knocking. That's why you find it. <laughs> seeking, you shall find. If you're seeking what you're looking for, you find it because after you've been knocking and doors are opening, knock, ask, knock, seek. Seek, and there it is. Because the doors have been opened. I've been asking questions. I've been knocking on doors. And now the thing I'm seeking, I find it because it's right there. Ask, seek. Ask and it shall be given. Knock and <laughs> ask, you, ask it shall be given. Knock and will be open and seek and you shall find. Ask, knock, seek. Ask, knock, seek. We got to keep doing that. We're working on a goal. We're working on a goal. And maybe I will make sure I get all excited. I will make sure I make, I, I'm going to I'm going to validate myself. Because sometimes I, I, I like to change those words. I'm going to look at the word of God. I'm not going to be prideful. I'm going to look at it and make sure I, I just said it right. Cause I never like to say the word wrong, so I'm gonna I'm gonna look at it exactly and read it right the way it should be said. Matthew seven seven. Matthew seven seven. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened. See, I'm glad I'm glad I stopped reading. See, I get excited and put them in the wrong order. Ask and it will be given to you. Ask, seek, and you will find. Knock and it will be opened. If you're seeking it, if you're seeking it, what? How are you gonna know to knock on the door if you don't seek it? If you're looking for how to find it, ask, how do I get there? How do I get there? Oh, it is over there. Now, if somebody gives you, somebody gives you a direction, come back your phone, phone's trying to bump, come back, there you go. Phone calls always try to come in. Praise God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, come here. Uh, trying to get, get back to you guys. Uh, no, I don't. Don't. There we are. Okay. Oh, that was a liar. Get this thing back here. Get back here. No, no. Telephone. I, I know you guys can still see me. My screen has done something really strange here. The phone call tried to come in. The devil's a liar. Uh, remove that. Move, move that hand. In your face, devil. In your face. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hold on. Hold on one second, guys. A little vertigo here for a second. Boom. Boom, now, I'm not trying to, there we go, there we go, there we go, boom, boom, okay, I don't know what the, I hope you guys can see my, my phone's doing something strange, of course, it's trying to block that last, it's trying to block that last one, so let me see, uh, give me a, give me a praise God, my, my screen is doing something crazy, I just need to hear praise God, are you guys still seeing me okay? My phone has got something crazy on it, but I want to see, uh, I want to keep going if you guys can still hear me okay. Can you see me okay? So give me a praise God, I can see you. And that lets me know that you can see me, amen? Yeah, so, so the, yeah, amen, praise God. See, the lie of the devil, and guess what? The next poem is stop fighting me, devil. <laughs> see, this whole distraction, my screen says, turn the phone around. But if I turn the phone around, it turns me off from you. And the last poem is Stop Fighting Me Now, talking to directly to the devil. Amen. So let me get that read right now while I still got you guys. So since you guys, since you guys can still hear me, I'm ignoring when I'm looking at, at the screen because the devil does not want you to hear this last poem. This last poem is Stop Fighting Me Now. Amen. Stop Fighting Me Now. Let me get it here. Okay. Get, get, we sat here one second. Ba -bum. Stop fighting me now. This poem 
This poem is talking directly to the devil. Stop fighting me now. Get out of my head. Talking to me, myself, and I. Sometimes I'm the one who is unstable. Oh Lord, please show me how. One day I'm on fire for you, on the word and standing tall. Then on another day, I have fallen from grace, feeling like I've lost it all. Self, I'm talking to you right now. My unfaithful ways must go. I've got to get my life back on track to please the God the only way I know. And that's to love on you, Lord, to trust in you, look to you in all times of need, give every part of my life to you. Doing that, I will succeed. Old ways, get back under my feet. I'm not going back to those days. When I, when I had the nerve to think sin was fun, which could have taken me out in so many ways, stop fighting me now. You better get a grip. You're not pulling me down with you. For now I live for Christ alone. Old ways, you and me are through. I'm not going back. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Old ways, sayonara, hasta la vista, baby. I'm not coming back old ways. So go way, way, way my window. You and the devil can go way, way my window because I'm not going back to the way I used to be. I'm holding on to God's unchanging hand. So stop fighting me. I'm talking to that devil that's trying to plant seeds in my mind and trying to make me look other ways. And that's why we start talking to it. You know, you know sometimes we got to talk to the devil who's talking to us. No, you're not going to make me stop today. Just like, just like, the, like whatever, whatever this is on the phone, trying to tell me I got to do something with the phone, knowing that I, if I follow the direction of what's on the phone right now, it will disconnect the stream. See, what, and I, I thought it was really funny that it popped up just before I was about to read, stop fighting me now. So we know who's behind the fight. Whenever you're going through a struggle in your mind, it's not your mind, it's the devil whispering in your mind, trying to tell you what you can't do, what you can't achieve. You'll never let go. You'll never be a success. You'll never get there. That's nothing but a lie from the pit of hell. The devil does not want you to get what you know is yours. It's already yours. It's already yours. We just got to connect with it. The devil's trying to keep us disconnected from our destiny. God's already trying to show us where we're going, when we're going to get there. We keep getting this interruption, just like we get disconnected on the phone. The devil tries to disconnect us from our dream, from our goal, from our purpose, from our, our whole reason for being on this world. So praise God. I don't care if I can see you or not. I know that you guys can hear me. That's all I need to know. So the devil's a lie in your face. Whatever this is on the phone, I don't care because as long as the fellowship can hear what I'm saying, the most important thing is to just do it. Whatever it is that got God planted in your spirit, whatever God has planted in your spirit, just do it. Because the Holy Spirit knows where you're trying to go. He knows what our assignment is. The Holy Spirit is trying to tell us what we need to do every day to get there. That's why we have to listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows exactly where we're going because he's connected to the, Holy, to the Father. He knows where we're going. He's trying to give us the motivation, the teachings, the people, whatever it is we need to walk in success. He knows exactly what we need that's godly. Not the thing we prayed for earlier, where the, uh, whoever's son it was signed a deal with the devil, thinking the only way to be successful in music is to sign a, a, sign a deal with the devil. We're not looking for that success. We're looking for success through the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. See, the world makes you think the only way to get there is by signing your life away. But God says, look, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do not love the things in this world, because once you love the things in this world, you're going to do whatever it takes to get the things in this world, including giving up your salvation. See, that's why you do not love the world, because the love of the world makes you think you love the world more than God. And God says, there shall be no other gods before me. So when you love the world more than you love God, you've just put the world above God. And that's an ultimate sin. The first thing he says, there should be no other God before me. And that's not loving the Lord with all, heart, all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I'm loving the world with all my heart, soul, and strength. If I'm living and loving the world, I'm continuously looking to the world for all my success, all my life, and my happiness. I'm not looking at the Lord. I'm looking at the world. 
all that is part of witchcraft and negativity because you've just chosen the world over God. And that's the sign of what the Antichrist is trying to do when it comes to time. That's what the Antichrist spirit is, to do anything you can to leave God out of the mix. You don't need God for success. You don't need God for money. Come over here. I'll give you everything. Just like the devil told Jesus, I'll give you all the kingdoms if you just bow to me. And what did Jesus say? Man shall, not live by word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Oh, you can show me all the kingdoms you want. Man shall not live by bread alone. Uh, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, I'm giving my life to the Lord. We've all committed to the Lord and we're holding on to his unchanging hand. And that's what this whole thing about defeating procrastination is all about. God knows where he wants to take us and he's going to get us there. We just have to hold on, hold on to God's unchanging hand because that's the key to getting to where God wants us to be. And wherever God is taking us is going to be much better than where we're trying to get without him amen so we're working hard but with god he knows our desires he knows what we do well he knows our personality he knows what we love he's not going to take you to a place where you hate he knows he knows the desires of our heart but when you put him first seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things we're praying for the desires of our heart will be added to us if we seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness keep god first and you'll never go wrong keep god first and you'll never go wrong he knows exactly what we need and how to get there without giving up your soul to the devil he'll show you how to get there because i could do all things through christ who strengthens me and that's the strength we hold on to whenever you feel like you're giving up you feel like you need strength if you have to say i can do all things through christ who strengthens me if you have to say that 50 times say it over and over again because he gives us a strength the joy of the lord gives us strength the things of god gives us strength if we leave god out the mix we get panic worry anxiety insomnia ulcers stress induced high blood pressure all kinds of negative stuff jumps on us when we don't keep our eyes and minds stayed on him that is what we've got to do to walk in victory in this world. We're in the world, but we're what? We are not of the world. We in this world, we see the perversion, we see the violence, injustice, chaos, all the stuff we see around us, but we're not a part of it. We're in the world, we were not of it. We are children of God, and nothing, no thing, shall by any means hurt us. Amen, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for another great lesson, Lord, to come together, even though the devil tried to block try to block this last message lord we know who's in charge lord we know no matter what's going on in this world you are still in charge lord you are still in charge of everything we see no matter how crazy it may look no matter how bad it may seem you are still in charge just like just like the like the pharaoh the pharaoh thought he was in charge but see god moved in many ways the pharaoh really wanted the, the, the Pharaoh wanted to let the people go in about the second or third plague. But the reason God gave all the other plagues wasn't for the Pharaoh. God wanted to show the people how mighty he was. So the first few plagues, the Pharaoh was ready, the Pharaoh was ready to say, Go, get out of here. But then if you read the Bible, it says, and once again, God hardened the Pharaoh's heart. That means there's a purpose. God wasn't ready for the people to go yet. God said, You know what? I know you're ready to let him go. But right now, I gotta teach the people what kind of God I am, the power I am, the omniscient, omnipotence, and omnipresent God I am. Let me give some more plagues to teach the people who I am. And that's why he sent the other plagues. And then finally, let my people go and freedom. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what it's all about. Don't let the things in this world steal your joy. So, people, so many people are worried about who's in office right now. God is in charge. I use that every time somebody tells me, but look who's president. Look, look, look at the crayon. Look at what's going on. I say, relax, relax. God is still in charge. Just like the Pharaoh thought he was in charge. God's going to move in such a way in due season that everybody's going to know. Oh, that's right. God still got this. And Father God, that's what we're doing right now, Lord. With the message today, with the spirit of procrastination, Lord, whatever it is, Lord, that's trying to stand in our way. As we're leaving the message today, Lord, 
Whatever it is trying to stand in our way, we remove it right now, Lord. We give it to you right now in the name of Jesus right now, Lord. We just give that thing to you right now that's standing in our way. We give it to you, Lord, and we let it go, Lord. Whatever it is, call it by name. Say, Lord, I give the whatever it is. I give procrastination. I give, I give fear. I give anxiety. I give worry. Whatever has been standing in your way, give it to the Lord right now. Call it by name. Lord, I give this to you right now, and I let it go, Lord. I let it go and trust you, Lord, for the victory over this thing I've been struggling with for so long. Thank you, Jesus. And right now, I want to bind every spirit of retribution, revenge, retaliation, and backlash from coming against any fellowship member right now because of your participation in this fellowship. I bind the spirits of retribution in the name of Jesus. I bind every spirit of retribution, revenge, retaliation, and backlash, and every other demonic spirit associated and cast you all back to the pit of hell, out of our mind, out of our presence, out of our home back to the pit of hell from whence you came in Jesus name and father got loose into the fellowship right now loose unspeakable joy peace beyond understanding Lord restore restore every area of our lives right now Lord restore restoration loose restoration our peace of mind our zest for living our health and well-being worry free debt free oh Lord restore 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 if I got loose reconciliation as we prayed earlier Lord heal all marriages struggling right now Lord with the sound of my voice Lord turn it around right now Lord bring healing communication trust and love back to those marriages falling apart right now Lord supernatural healing and reconciliation and bring families back together Lord that are in dispute right now Lord bring the healing to all families right now in Jesus name Lord and can continue as I said earlier continue to protect every family and marriage that is not struggling but is still under attack if I got, if I got loose supernatural healing by your stripes we are healed and Lord let your healing power touch every fellowship member right now who has any kind of infirmity long term short term whatever it is Lord by your stripes we are healed from every infirmity and we say Lord every day we speak it into existence thank you Lord I believe I've received my healing I believe I have received my healing I believe I have received my healing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father God, lose supernatural overflow, abundance, provision to all those needing a financial blessing right now. Whatever it is, Lord, let your blessings rain down. Rain down on everyone that can hear my voice, wherever it is, live or archive. Or for we are the head and not the tail. We are blessings flowing in, blessings flowing out. We are blessed that we may be a blessing to others. We're above and not beneath. We're the lender and not the borrower. We are out of debt. All of our needs are met. We have plenty more to put in store. We are children of God. And nothing, no thing shall by any means hurt us or block our blessings in any way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And right now, someone's been watching the past couple of hours who does not know the Lord. You've been, you've been hearing us praise God. You've been hearing us pray for each other. But you just hear crying. You're here feeling alone. You feeling like you've been abandoned. You feel like you have no reason to live. And for some reason, you found yourself on this channel. That is not an accident. The Lord brought you to this channel to bring some healing to you, to bring some knowledge to you, to bring healing in some way. If you're listening to me right now and you feel like there's no reason to live, say this prayer with me right now. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done. Forgive me for the wrong I've been. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I commit right now, I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without lifting it up to you first, Lord. Creating me a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything that is not like you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. And once you say that prayer sincerely, the Holy Spirit will come into your life and help clean out all the things in your life that are not like God. All the people, the thoughts, activities, places you go. God is right there. and He's going to be right there for to help you be victorious in that area of your life. Amen, amen, amen.